Okay, the engine's out. I've got to get this thing apart. Uh, my goal is to have this done by next, the end of next weekend. So hopefully I'll get it done. I didn't get anything done this, this last weekend on it. I want to get the, I'm just going to take the head off. I'm not worried about taking the injectors out or anything at this point. I just want to take a look inside there and I want to get possibly the model block off tonight so I can start working on a little bit of, you know, I'll take a look at the ports ports look like and stuff here pretty good. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, a little bit of coolant laying around in there yet. Doesn't look bad. I have the plugs out already. And I'm gonna have to replace them obviously. But it looks like they're rich and there's a pretty darn good gap on them too so I'm gonna have to Get some new plugs, gap them, and index them. That's coming up. Okay. Gotta pull the model block off tonight. Give it a good inspection. This cylinder on this side looks pretty good. Uh, I don't have a I don't have a good light out here. Yeah. Anyway, there's no scoring or anything in that in that one. It's a little bit concerned about there's a bit of a mark right there, but I can't even feel it. So let's see if it polishes out. All I'm going to do for the bores is use some sco uh, green Scotch Brite. I don't see anything else so far of concern. So we've got to pull the power valves off and get this mono block off tonight as the plan is. Not overly concerned about the injectors, let me know in the comments what you think. 4600 kilometers so maybe I don't think they're ready for a rebuild maybe I should just clean them up with some injector cleaner or something. Uh, this definitely has more carbon in this side so that would be the uh, the PTO side. Got some carbon buildup. So I'll be cleaning up the chambers really good. This side is just a little softer. Yeah, and it's not a ton. I'm already, yeah, uh, see, scrape right through it. Okay. Not too, too bad. Things aren't looking bad so far. It's too bad I don't have my light out here. I forgot that. But I'm sure you'll get lots of opportunity to see what it looks like in there. See, that's about the only thing kind of concerns me is there's a little mark right there, but I don't think it's through the Nicosil. So I think we're good. As far as uh, as wear on the cylinders is, is concerned, I don't see any chips in it so far. We'll get it off and see what it looks like. It's actually stuck down fairly good, so I just had to wrap it a bit dead blow and then just with a screwdriver that tap it be gentle and let's see what everything looks like in here okay the mono block the bores look good no chipping and it's not the, the nicosil's not worn through so that's good news because that's a pretty big bill if you have to start sending that away or getting our exchange monoblock. And pretty minor scuffing on the pistons. I'll just clean them up here and then I'll show you. Still some of the coating left, the anti-scuff coating on the pistons. Uh, exhaust side looks really good. Yeah, okay, let's have a look. So there's the PTO side. Doesn't look like they're really heated up. See a little bit of scuffing right there. I can just feel it just barely with my fingernail. Definitely minor. Now let's just turn it over and get that other piston a little higher up. Clean the oil off it. Yeah, this one's in even better shape. A little bit of scoring. That one's, I can feel that one, but. Uh, all in all, it's not bad at all. Not bad condition. 
Original pistons, obviously, single ring pistons. Maybe I should have done a compression check on it just to find out, but uh, at this point, the pistons look good. Bit of carbon on the top, uh, not much for wash, but then not being a carbureted snowmobile, of course, your pistons are going to read different anyway. Okay, so that's where I'm at with this. I'm going to be pulling off the uh, stator, the flywheel and the stator I'll pull off probably tomorrow afternoon. Tonight I'm probably going to try and get back out here and uh, I'll get back out here and take the take the power valves out and they'll, I'll clean them up while they're out, of course. And I want to get this monoblock cleaned up a little. Take a look at, get a good look at the kind of condition it's in. And I'll take a look at the ports, I'll probably polish them up the very minimum polish them. I'm not too sure how much material will be taken out of them. But anyways, it'll be a fun project all the same. Polish up the exhaust ports and that. Get the head cleaned up. Uh, I better get some plugs coming for it. So yeah, a few things. But like I say, by next weekend I'm going to be putting in the rebuilt crankshaft. I'll probably weld the pin on the mag side, uh, PTO side, pardon me. Probably do that, <clears throat> and then that'll probably, I'll probably need to true it up after that. So I'll check the run out on it, and if it needs, if it needs to be adjusted at all, then I'm probably going to put it in the live centers on my lathe, put it on the centers, and then true it up from there. So stay tuned. Might as well get these pistons out of here too and show you what they look like. I mean, you kind of know already, but. probably shouldn't pull these wrist pins out like this but I'm not going to reuse them so who cares. The wrist pins look pretty good. I already got the other piston off. It's right here. Not in bad shape. Bearings in really good shape. So this is just a preventative maintenance rebuild. Like I, I'd rather rebuild it before it burns down and leaves me stranded in the back country. But you can see it's coating still on some of the pistons. These are in really good shape for 4,500 kilometers. Not bad at all. Just a little bit of a gouge there. I don't know, maybe some debris got in the intake there. That was the intake side of the piston. Okay, so that's the, that's the mag side piston there. So you're, when you're pulling the pins out, it's going to be a little bit tight, but just work at them. I just pushed it out with a screwdriver from this side and got it far enough out I could grab it with pliers. I'm not reusing any of these parts, so if it got a little bit scored up, I'm not worried about that. One of the sur clips went flying when I, when I took it out with a screw. I just pried it out with a screwdriver. It's laying on the bench here somewhere. I hate it when that happens, but since I got new ones, I don't really, it's not the end of the world. So not that this matters. The rod's looking in really good condition as well. Uh, this this crank is probably still good. I don't know what the runout's like. I, I'm, I think I'll check the runout just for just to see what it's at. Uh, the bearings and everything. I, I think the crank probably could have went further, but this because when I took this side apart, the PTO side off, because of the, the bearing spinning on the crank, it should be it should be at least a friction fit on there. The bear at the very least, they should be on there a lot tighter than what it was so I'm not going to take a risk at that once you blow a crankshaft and then you it takes out the case you can take out the top end and everything and then you're looking at a, another engine and this has still saved me money rebuilding it myself okay so that was good uh, like it doesn't take long to tear an engine down once it's out of the chassis yeah, there goes the head bolts cylinder hold down bolts I should say it doesn't take long to get a to get an engine apart once you get it out of the chassis now the time consuming part is going to be to clean everything, clean all your surfaces off. I mean, it's not a ton of surfaces. This uses O-rings on the head, so there's only one big gasket on the base here, but I will have to put a new gasket on the water pump housing. I've got to get the, the flywheel pulled off yet, get this bearing retainer off, take all the bolts out of the case, and then split the case. And then put the new crankshaft in after I do, like I say, I want to weld the pin 
on uh, the PTO side, so this rod, lower rod pin, this crank is in good condition. However, I don't know what the runout is on this crankshaft either, so as, even though the bearings are, there's no play in the bearings, I still haven't checked the runout on it. So it might have been, it might have been out and wobbling a bit, and if that's the case, it would need uh, either to be trued up anyways, and if I'm going to go that far, might as well just put a new, a rebuilt crankshaft in it at this point. So we've got to get the power valves out yet, and I've got to pull the, the flywheel. Oops, pull the flywheel out here. Probably not going to get it that yet tonight but it is uh, that is going to be one of the next steps is pull off the flywheel pull off the flywheel housing all these parts i'm gonna oh, there's a lot of stuff in there maybe from the recoil i don't know what the black dust is i'll probably be taking this stuff down and cleaning it up all of it will wa i'll wash it all off and make sure that there's not a bunch of grime and everything on it so it looks nice and then going back together hopefully by hopefully by this weekend early weekend Saturday morning I'll be going back together with this thing. now I'm going to take these power valves out so we got two eight mil bolts here they have to come out then two 15 millimeter nuts got the one off this side this one I've almost got out oh, got a lock tight on there Put those out then <clears throat> this kind of bridge piece off with your actuator there there we got a few of these out then you got a, I think this is another t25 torx here t30 torx four and eight millimeter socket got, uh, two in each rave valve there and then they just come out so these ones are look Pretty clean. Oops. Yeah, so uh, those, as you can see, fall out. A little bit of wear, but for the most part, they're pretty clean. I'll be cleaning these anyways. <clears throat> so I'll put those there. Try and make sure everything goes in the same spot. When you put, go back together again. Surfaces are going to be the same. And here's the other side, so I'm just going to hold on to those, keep it together. Doesn't look that bad. Really, a bit of carbon. So, there. The reason why I wanted to get those apart tonight is I'm going to take this model block down to work and I'm going to be cleaning it up, so I'll take you with me on that. Uh, first, just need to do a really good cleaning on it, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna do a little bit of port work and stuff. Get these gaskets cleaned up. I'm gonna keep this part of this gasket in particular because that's gonna give me my thickness, those holes in the gasket. So, uh, yeah, right. so I'm gonna have to just scrape that. Up. Those holes in the gasket are gonna indicate how thick it is. So. That's how you can change your compression and port timing slightly if you haven't already rebuilt one of these or watched the videos. I've read in the forums about rebuilding these engines. So that's something that you want to know, take note of, because your new gasket kit should have different thicknesses. So I may. I may put a little bit thinner gasket in, I'll see. I'll, I'll do the, the calculations. We do ride at really high elevations here. So it might, might help just to have a little extra squish. Starting out at about the bottom of the valley here is like 2,500 feet. We ride up to 10,000. Well, the highest we go is probably 10,000 feet. I will be cleaning up the ports a little bit. The port, I don't know, the, these engines are dialed pretty good. I don't know how much I'm going to gain if I do. I might knife edge my bridges here. I see that bridge is split. That must be something to do with press, pressure equalization between the ports. Uh, the transfers and stuff, I, I probably just polish a little bit in here like there's some flash. 
casting flash here and there. And of course I could I could polish up in here a little too since this is a direct injection engine I'm not worried about fuel atomization. And I'll polish up the exhaust like it's not super rough, pretty smooth. I noticed in the intake that there is quite a bit of flash here and there. So I mean I can't I can't lose anything by doing that so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of that port work on it. Anyways that's the plan. So uh, I will be also scuffing up the the bores with some just with some green scotch brite. I don't see any damage in there. I, like there's a couple of little gouges on the pistons, but as far as the bores are concerned, it's not. There's nothing I'm concerned about. I'm worried about in there. Looks good. Okay, so next video we'll be cleaning this up and and doing a little bit of port work.